we go. Technical difficulties. We have to control. That's the uh, traffic engineer for uh, Dollar General. Okay. In case you had any questions. I see. Good. We up already? Good evening. Welcome to the August 9th, 2022 Murraysville Planning Commission meeting. Will you please all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Patty. Will you call the roll, please? Mr. Lemke? Here. Ms. Hoy? Mr. Meidel? Here. Mr. Patrick? Here. Mr. Olszewski? Here. Mr. Kearns? Here. Mr. Levecki? Here. Okay, we have uh, minutes from July 12th. Is there any comments or corrections to the minutes as presented? No? Nope. Somebody make a motion, please. I move the minutes be accepted. I hear a second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Opposed? Thank you. Hey, we, are, we don't have anything on the agenda, but I understand there's someone that wants to uh, address the Planning Commission, a citizen, here tonight. Could you come up and use the microphone, sir, identify yourself and uh, give us your address? Yeah, my name's Larry Liebertor. I live on Wilcox Circle. We've been out here about 29 years. Um, I want to say you guys do a great job. Thanks. And I've never been to one of these meetings before. Uh, as a, a resident, I have a concern, though, that was brought to our attention. I was not approached by the company, which is Apex. I guess they're putting a gas line in my backyard. A gas line? Gas line. Okay. Um, and I, I guess they want to develop some drill sites out here. And... Uh, we were approached by this comp this uh, group, Protect PT. Are you guys familiar with them? Heard of them. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so I'm glad they did because I guess Murraysville's a little behind the times when it comes to fracking ordinances. No, sir. <laughs> no, we're not. So that's the, ordin wrong. the ordinance that Protect PT proposes to protect was copied from Murraysville. We spent almost eight years developing a drilling ordinance here. Gotcha. What is the distance from a home? I believe it's 750 feet. Yeah, that's a concern for me as a resident where they want to put, I guess, in Dr. Kahn's property. It's we have not been approached by Apex for any drilling application. Okay. Um, is it possible to expand that? The distance? Yeah. Well, I believe the state only requires uh, 300 feet. So we expanded it to 750, and that was debated for several months here by council when they developed the ordinance. Okay. Uh, there was a number of factors that went into that. Uh, was the ability to uh, satisfy landowners' rights, uh, to protect residents, um, and to... Uh, make sure that uh, uh, we were meeting some of the requirements of the state ordinance or state laws. Okay. So also, I want to mention we have an overlay district that does not take into account the whole municipality. Is that correct? Wilcox would be, I believe Wilcox is in the overlay district. Okay. I'm not sure what that means. But. Uh, it, uh, part of the evaluation of the ordinance was that we wanted to limit the impact of one gas drilling in the municipality of Murraysville. So we identified areas of uh, low population density, um, roads, uh, topography, a number of factors, and overlaid a district over the rural residential zoning district of which they're permitted to uh, drill, which roughly equates to about 7% of the total municipality. Okay, so this Wilcox Circle area, they can drill there? You're out. Uh, Wilcox is off of out in Lions Run. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's what I thought. That would is, be devastating. Uh, is this uh, Apex well proposal in Penn Township? It is. Yeah, they're putting a drilling site there, and the the plan is to put this utility line. It's an eight inch 
methane gas line, which will have no odor to it, all the way to Delmont. It's a gathering line. Gathering line? Okay. But they approach the Lions Run uh, HOA because they're telling them it's going through their yard. And Jim would know. He developed that. Well, they would have to secure easements and right away through privately owned property. Well, where they're telling um, the Lions Run Estates people, it's in the valley. We own the valley. We own two-thirds of the way up that hill. Now, they've already walked the property. The guy goes, oh, it's nice down there. I said, you're on our property. No, that's our property. I said, no, it's not. So who, who? Apex. Oh, okay. Apex has taken the HOA well, guy down there. Apex, uh, you may want to look at your deed. They may have rights there. Well, there's an easement across there now. Who owns the easement? Right to be there. Well, no, no, they don't. There was an attorney at this thing. There's a four-inch. There's two lines down there now. Okay, one is abandoned. The other one is active, but it's a four-inch line. Probably comes from Pleasant Valley. Yeah, I'm not sure where it comes from, but it's been there for years. But it's basically maybe 25 feet from the creek uh, towards the lines run side. And again, for some reason, they think. Apex thinks that property belongs to Lions Run Estates. It does not. That property belongs to each resident along Wilcox Circle, but he said, he says, well, I don't want to bother with them. That's too many people to contact. Well, yeah, but it's our property. So and for them to put an 8-inch line, they would need a new easement. Not necessarily, sir. They could, they could, they could put it in their existing easement. No, according to this attorney, no. But this is why I'm bringing. What, it up. what what attorney, sir? There was a guy there. It was an attorney. Uh, it, for regardless of for the lines run the states people. Okay. He, he was a, he's an he is an attorney actually. Okay. Well, I I mean that that's a fight that's going to go on beyond this chamber here. I mean that's a private private uh, property dispute. Yeah. Uh, over uh, over who owns what easement and where. And so they'll probably have to, to satisfy everybody, they'll probably have to have it surveyed. Yeah. Okay, because they have not approached us at all, any of the residents on Wilcox Circle. Well, if you think you own it, and you may check to see if there is, isn't already an easement through there that was put in. a four-inch line, and it runs through there now. Well, then there's obviously an easement through there, I would think. On our property, there is. Okay. Not for an eight-inch line. Well, uh, that's a civil matter, sir, that has to be resolved between the property owners. The municipality has no role there. Okay. But what if someone's digging in my backyard? Uh, if they're trust, if you believe they're trespassing on your property, yeah, then you can notify the police department. But if before I would do that, I would make sure that proper research is done on those deeds to ensure that they don't have rights to go through that property because those oil and gas rights are very tricky and you may not be aware of them and unless there's a detailed review of the deeds of those properties, you don't know what rights they have there. And yeah, that easement a lot of may include them to come in there and replace or put a new line in or, or any of those things. Yeah, the old, the old gas, gas line right-of-ways were very vague in general. I mean, they could do almost anything, whatever, whatever they want. Ever describe exactly where the easement is? Okay. Uh, well, how about the additional pad they're considering putting on Dr. Kahn's property? Is that in Penn Township? No, that's right. That's right by us. Well, what I said, sir, they have not made any application to the municipality. They do own property over there. I can tell you that. Yeah. Um, but they have to go through a permitting process with both the state and the municipality. They have a right to drill property if they own certain rights of the property, especially the gas rights. But if we had a uh, distance to a house of like 2,500 feet instead of 750, that would help the whole community. Yeah, but 
It's, uh, the ordinance is what the ordinance is. That's fait accompli. Can't be changed? Oh, it can be changed, sure. Oh, all how do I get it changed? All it takes is a, as an act of uh, the council. Okay, so I have to go to the council. You can go. Okay. But, but, you know, they've, as Mr. Morrison pointed out, they spent years developing that ordinance. They spent a lot of time, I know, discussing what is a, what is a reasonable safe distance and that's the distance they arrived at. So, you know, take that into consideration. Okay, so I need to address the council then, is what you're saying to me. Because the council told me to start here. I will address it with them then. Okay. All right. Well, thanks. thanks for everything again. Well, thank, thank you for coming. You you're welcome to stay. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> I, I don't know, one of the applicants might have brought cookies or something. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again, guys. Have a good evening. Okay. Is there anyone else who wish to address uh, the Planning Commission? All right. We'll get into old business. Uh, number one is the uh, recommendation for rezoning the 22 acres on uh, Logan's Ferry Road, which I understand we have a request to table that. Uh, I don't know whether you all have copies of this or not, but... Mr. Hogan Roeder uh, sent a request in to table <coughs> last week. Okay. So can I have a motion to table? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, we have a uh, next item is the site plan for the Dollar General on Route 66. Uh, this is out just directly across from Ringer Town Road and in front of, uh, oh, what's, what's the lumber, Salem, Salem. Presenting the applicant. Yes, sir, good evening. Uh, my name is Mike Lasitis. I'm with Stackback Engineering. Uh, with me tonight is Bob Gage uh, of GBT Realty, who is the developer for the property. Okay. Um, just here to provide an update and uh, if it you see fit, uh, make a recommendation on, on the uh, proposed development. Um, but as of the last time we had met, if everyone's familiar, this is uh, the site along State Route 66, uh, adjacent to Industrial Drive. There is a uh, proposed bike trail that you can see uh, on the plan in front of you. Um, along the Kind of north northwest portion of the of the property, so that is not an existing bike trail. It's something that's proposed in the future. Um, we have been working with the county uh, to ensure that we don't negatively impact their their plans for that future trail. Um, there's an easement currently in the works for that that trail. Uh, I believe the the language is is uh, out there for review. I believe both attorneys for. Uh, both the seller and, and the developer have reviewed it and found the language to be uh, acceptable with a few minor adjustments. Um, okay. Is that dotted line around there, the uh, or dashed line, the proposed easement, sir? That is not the easement area. I believe that's kind of their, their limit of disturbance that they've delineated on that, on that plan. Uh, there's a separate easement sheet, I believe one sheet prior to that. Okay, so, well shows the overall but that's area. the general area where this is going to be that's that's where the grading will take place and for the the tunnel itself okay and the disturbance um we had received a uh, a briefing letter on july 15th outlining the the remaining items uh, for discussion um several of them were, were simply outstanding approvals uh pendot uh, the npds approval um associated loosely with with the pen out approval um, is TIA approval that TIA was submitted on July 14th um, for review by the municipality and their, their traffic engineer um, there was some as a recap to the overall findings of the TIA we do have our, our traffic engineer on standby if there are any specific questions or or concerns um, I'm not a traffic engineer but I can give you my my best overview um, the main impact uh, finding of the TIA report was uh, a loss in the level of service to the Ringertown Road intersection. So there's an existing intersection directly across from the site. 
operates at, I believe, uh, in the in the PM, it's a level of service E, so you'd sit there for around half a minute um, before making a, a left turn. Um, you say E or B? E. E. Um, it goes from D to E. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, the the biggest impact from the findings, um, existing condition out during the PM peak was was an E, so it's a, a delay of about 38 seconds. Um, and the, what was it before? That so that is the current condition, uh, as it is today. Okay. Um, and this is this is the worst peak hour in the day, which is the PM. Um, so you're looking at the worst possible scenario if you will. Um, the projected drops to an F of around 56 seconds. So um, it's about uh, 19 second difference um, in someone sitting there waiting to turn. Um, so that, that was the biggest finding from the report itself, the biggest takeaway uh, impact. Uh, the overall level of service of that intersection is an A when you look at time periods as a whole, um, outside of that exacerbated difference in the PM peak. Um, so basically the majority of the time uh, that, that intersection operates at a, at a fairly good level of service outside of those, those peak hour times. Um, we had looked at, I guess, potential for adjustment to, to lessen those impacts. And unfortunately, I, I, we haven't been able to come up with a, a great solution to to lessen those impacts, it kind of just, you know, you add another leg to that intersection and, and it is what it is. Um, it is the ideal scenario, I believe. Uh, typically, you want to line up in, in an opposite intersection with, with another intersection. Once you offset those, uh, it tends to become problematic from a, a traffic standpoint. Um, leads to conflicts and things of that nature. So um, typically, you know, a, a minor additional delay is better than creating an accident prone scenario. Um, so that was, that was the, the basis of, of the findings of the TIA um, as it was submitted. Uh, we're still awaiting, I guess, more or less of official comments in that capacity, but I, in talking to Jim, that was uh, the main point that, that they had taken away so far as well. Um, Excuse me, those, those comments were included in your briefing. Yes. I in the uh, July 15th letter, right? No, of the uh, municipal briefing. Yeah, the municipal briefing yeah. on the July 15th. That's correct. Yes. <laughs> so, you're saying that, that the service coming out of Ringertown in the PM to turn left right. out of there goes from a theoretical 38 seconds to a the theoretical 56 seconds. Correct. And probably the only way to alleviate that would be to install a, a light, I assume. Well, not necessarily. Uh, it's, it's far from the, the light warrants, so it's it, it wouldn't be a, a reasonable solution to put a light in there. It would, it would tend out, first of all, wouldn't allow it since the warrants aren't met. Okay. Um, another solution, a potential solution, would be to connect to Industrial Drive and have the intersection come out in Industrial Drive. However, that would obviously lead to impacts to that proposed bike trail. Um, yeah. You would either have to extend the tunnel or uh, propose a bridge or some sort of other crossing there. Um, so that was, yeah, our, our, our main solution, I guess, would involve industrial drive. It's, it's not an ideal scenario. Um, and if, if the council finds it appropriate, I think the, the proposed plan as shown continues to, uh, just align those intersections. Well, if they would move it to the south, it would create a site distance issue. Yeah. 
and I really can't can't see how moving it so that it lines up with industrial drive is going to change anything. Chris, do you what he's? I agree. Yeah. This gentleman want to speak? Jason, I I don't know if you have something something you wanted to add. If you wanted to unmute. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for getting us up to speed here. Um, just to reiterate what we talked about in terms of the study, um, everything was standard here, as was mentioned. The increase in the delay um, is typical when going from a three leg to a four leg intersection. Um, despite us having a driveway with very minimal additional traffic and no additional traffic expected on Ringertown Road. Um, with all this in mind, even though the delays are um, not desirable, we watch existing traffic to determine how many gaps there are with respect to traffic signals upstream um, so that, you know, is there enough space and enough time for vehicles to make a left out? Or a right out. And we looked at it in both perspectives from Ringertown Road making a left and from our driveway making a left and a right. And there are more than enough gaps, a significant number of gaps to be able to make left out. So while you may have to wait a couple of extra seconds here and there to make a left, you will be able to get out in due time, but it may not be as easy as just pulling right off and making a left out. So we don't anticipate there being any exacerbated traffic issues in the future with our site. Okay. Thank you, Jason. Appreciate it. Okay. You want to continue on, sir? Sure. Um, so aside from that TIA discussion um, that's currently ongoing, um, the other remaining items are the approval of a waiver of screening along State Route 66. Um, I believe we had discussed it at a, at a prior meeting, but um, essentially the, the ordinance requires uh, vegetative screening along the entire site frontage um, in addition to screening around the parking area which is currently shown on the plan um, more of a, a shrubbery around the, the outside of the, the perimeter of the parking area um, the reason for the uh, request of relief is is simply to maintain as much visibility as we can to the, the store frontage itself um, and to you know so the passers-by can see the store coming on it, it in my opinion really comes down to a, a potential traffic safety issue where you know you may have have a, a patron slamming on the brakes last second once they realize that there's a store there um, due to vegetation blocking site um, so do you have that, a landscaping plan that you could put up is that it there yes yes sir uh, so I see what four or five trees up front correct i think there's there's about six of them uh kind of scattered along the frontage um and and then what's that up around the perimeter of the parking in the front does so it around the perimeter of the parking is, is more of like a, a lower growing shrub um it's it's not gonna grow up tall and, and prohibit view to the, the store frontage itself um as far as this so what are you required to have there? Uh, An eight-foot planting strip, minimum four foot high, evergreen. Eight foot wide, four foot. Strip. So. There is a landscape strip of sorts across the front around the around the parking lot. Correct. Yeah, there's 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 a landscaping strip around the, the entire frontage of, of the perimeter of the parking itself. And so, how wide is that, and how high is it? Uh, it's about it's about four feet wide, three three to four feet wide. Um, the plants themselves. You have to use the microphone, sir. Excuse me. Um, it's about three to four feet wide as far as the planting strip goes with plants around four feet tall. Um, that's, that's currently what's proposed. It's open for, for discussion of, of 
reference as far as the municipality goes, but um, the idea is basically sufficient enough to block headlights pointing out towards the, the state road and and you know block most of the visibility of cars parked there. But aside from that, we don't want to block too much of the the store frontage itself. So right now, it looks like that the landscaping plan says that those are to be determined by the landscaper. Those plants on, along the front parking lot, is that correct? Uh, I believe that's what we left it up as for now, just depending on availability, if there's a specific preferred species that you guys like to see proposed, we can, we can require a certain type. Well, we can't leave it up to the landscaper to, uh, <laughs> to, to pick whatever he wants. Uh, so we'll have to uh, define that a little better. You guys have, are you familiar with a, a boxwood? Yes. Is that something you would like to see? Green all year round. <laughs> it can get to about four foot high. Supposed to be four foot high to planning. Uh, on you what the ordinance says. <laughs> I understand. Okay, well, what else do you have here that you're asking for a waiver on? <laughs> uh, at the moment, that is, that is the only waiver being requested. Um, we do have, I guess, depending on how the discussion goes, we may need to, to request another waiver. Uh, but the final item, uh, outstanding in that the previous briefing is a resolution of the uh, of parking and loading concern that was um, discussed, where the, uh, the loading area could potentially block four parking spaces in, in the parking aisle um, when the trucks there. Uh, the, large delivery truck, uh, provides deliveries once a week at a limited time frame, typically in the morning from what I understand. Um, so it would be a, a limited blockage of those parking spaces themselves. However, it still would be a, a blockage at a certain time. Um, so the, the proposed solution originally was to uh, either provide signage for those four spaces to be employee parking only, um, or warn that they could be blocked during during truck delivery activity, um, or I guess the other potential solution is to, to stripe them off entirely um, and request a reduction in, in the overall parking. Currently, we have 43. <coughs> the known requirement for that particular use uh, is 35 spaces at a minimum. Um, so typically know that there's never a need for more than 35 spaces for that use. That's what the ordinance requires is 35? 43. 43 is the ordinance, ordinance requires 43. How many have you provided on here? Currently what's shown is 43. So just to clarify, when you said 35, that's DG's requirements for this exactly. particular prototype. So, so with their internal review, they've determined that they only need 35 spaces. <coughs> and that's based on hundreds of stores, 19, thousands, I think, right? <laughs> you said uh, th those, there's a uh, once a week delivery from a large truck. <clears throat> Is that the only time those spaces will be blocked or do the daily smaller trucks block them as well? Sure. So, Could you please uh, use the microphone, please, sir? So um, my name's Bob Gage, I'm with GBT Realty. We are the developers on the project. Uh, so the delivery schedule is they will receive one WB62 truck as early on Monday morning as they can. That's a 70-foot-long um, semi-tractor trailer. Uh, that typically is on site between 45 minutes and an hour and a half, one time a week. Uh, the rest of the week, they will get deliveries from smaller box trucks, Coke, bread, that sort of thing, and they'll come scattered throughout the week. But they are small, single-axle box trucks and uh, they will be unloading in the same location. So we don't think that they're going to have an impact on those uh, four parking spaces. The only thing that looks like a conflict is the large semi that is delivered once a week. Did you submit anything uh, that you, uh, from your other stores that uh, justified the 35? Is there any, was there? Well, as, of, as of now, we show 43 I can provide you that information uh, you gotta be careful there are you can't, I don't think you have the right to way but that's an ordinance provision they would have to get a variance for that I understand but doesn't it say that uh, it can be based on a parking study 
can be. We'd be happy to submit that information if you'd like it. If you'd like us to go that route. Well, I, I think it. I think if you can justify 35 spaces via parking store parking study from how many stores? 19,000. Can you get 20? <laughs> give, give me a couple months, I will. <laughs> uh, we do allow for parking studies to be submitted to justify it. Okay. So the approval would be subject to that parking study. Yes. You can certainly do that, sir. Okay. What uh, What else is in the July 15th letter that you haven't covered? I think that's pretty much the gist of it outside of uh, working out a developer's agreement, financial security, which comes at a later time from what I understand. Um, and there is, uh, I guess, a little bit of discussion on the facade that, that we were hoping to uh, Kind of go through tonight and, and get some feedback on from, from the commission. Okay. If I may, to go back to the parking, the other alternative is to designate those four or five spaces as employee parking. And we would be okay with that as well. That's another alternative. Me personally, I would be okay with that, knowing the familiarity with DG and some of these other stores. I think it would. I think that's a fair. I'm just looking for a way to get them through without having to go seek a variance. Well, by designating it as employee parking, then we can resolve it that way. Well, what happened? I, I don't see what the purpose of designating it as employee parking. You have employees there when the truck comes. I don't think the store is open if it's early in the morning. So they try to get there before the store opens. Obviously, weather and traffic has an impact on the so does the driver have a key to the door and he goes in and puts all the stuff in? I mean, in there. No, sir. They, uh, the manager comes <laughs> opens the door and puts them in. But okay. uh, like I said, the, that delivery truck is typically on site between 45 minutes and an hour and a half. Mm. Okay. Well, we, so either one, uh, you guys are going to have to share the microphone. I'm being hollered at again. <laughs> uh so either they could provide a parking study or designate them as employee parking, which would satisfy the administration. Uh, it's up to planning commission's desire which way you want to go there. Yeah, well, I don't really see this as a monumental issue myself. If the planning commission would consider 35 spaces, that might be the ideal scenario for everyone. It saves on impervious area, it relieves you of stormwater discharge from the site. Well, yeah, well, you're still going to have the impervious area there because you're still going to need the room for the for the truck. Well, it's it's the space. Is, so the truck's not taking up the parking spaces themselves. It, it takes up Maneuver. the aisle in front of the parking. Okay. So it prohibits ingress and egress from those parking spaces. But if you don't need them at all, we could actually remove some of that impervious area where the parking spaces are. Okay. All right. So what what else do we have? Uh. Just the facade discussion. Just the, the facade. And what's the issue with the facade? It was meeting the uh, glazing requirements and uh, the breakup. I, yeah, I don't think you like the look of our building, was what. <laughs> so I brought a couple. That's, uh, that's, that's a distinct possibility. <laughs> <laughs> I have a couple handouts here, if, if I may. I'll hand sure. this out to everyone. Sure. Okay. So I've got two versions. We can share. <laughs> we can share. It's two different things. <clears throat> can you? Yeah. Do you have enough for Mr. Morrison? I Mm -hmm. Sure, that'd be great. Okay, so what do we got here? What are we looking at? 
So you're looking at one, uh, the one that shows all the windows on it, uh, that's got the multi-colored. That doesn't have the big dollar general sign on it? That one, the, the one he's holding up. Yeah. Okay. So that is, uh, we've put pilasters, uh, basically faux columns across the front of the site. Uh, it creates a little undulation in that front uh, wall. Okay. This will also be copied down this, one of the side walls. Uh, we've put glazing in between each one of those um, pilasters. Faux glazing? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, they are, they're, all the windows are faux except for the entry, uh, the windows at the entry. And uh, the material that we're looking to put on this is called, uh, it's a niche ha panel is the brand name for it. It is a cementitious board that's stamped to look like brick. So uh, even up close, it looks just like brick. We use it on uh, probably 80% of the stores that we put up. It's uh, very attractive. You can get any color. You can get any, basically any material that you want stamped on it, stone, brick. Those are the columns across there? Actually, the entire face of that, that store okay. will be the, those, uh, that cementitious board with just different patterns stamped on it. I see. And we can do the colors. Those colors that you see on there are not necessarily what we have to do. If you've got a preference, we can change those colors up a little bit. <coughs> um, we, like, we like what the, the colors are shown there, but if you like something different, we can, we can certainly do that. And I assume the white thing over the entrance is where it would say Dollar General. Correct. Yes, sir. And uh, your ordinance dictates that we need to uh, upgrade three sides of the building, the front and both end walls. Uh, I'd like to ask if we could uh, delete the upgrade on the southeast wall. The right. It, yes, sir, the right side if you're facing the building. Uh, that side of the, of the property, there is a very steep bank that runs up the side, and it's covered in uh, trees. It's forested. You're not going to be able to see it. So what would that be? Just metal siding then? Yes, sir. That and the rear of the building. You don't like metal build the metal, metal building. On, it can't be metal on that side. It has can't to be. have yeah, it has to have fall glass or glass on that side. Which side? On the southeast side that he's referring to. The left side? The right side. The right that side. he's referring to. Storage area, or if it's facing a wall or facing. Can we see the site plan again? Sure. It's up on the screen as well. So, what we're talking uh, about five is five this. foot embankment. I mean, who's going to see that? <laughs> You're just asking me what the ordinance requires. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but we, we could recommend a waiver of that. Yes. So that side, the right side, and the rear is what we would be seeking the relief from. Does everybody understand that? We'd be recommending a waiver on the right side and the rear. And the front and the left side would be th this. Yes, sir. That is correct. Could you somehow provide for... Uh, for the application itself, uh, a description of this material and, and the uh, and even a, maybe a sample just so. Absolutely, yes, sir. I can bring samples next time I come, and we can submit those uh, to the municipality. Okay, so just a clarification, uh, Jim, you were kind of objecting to the the metal on the right side, and I thought. That what we were giving them relief was for faux glass on the right. That's correct. So you still want to see this finish on the on the right and the left, but no glass on the on the right. Is that where we are? Wait, uh, Ed, you're not using your. <laughs> Earlier, you were. You seemed to be objecting to the metal on the on the right side. That's so, right. just to clarify. The relief that we're giving them is they would provide this uh, masonry type product on the right side, but no faux glass. No, no, no. I, I think okay. I think where we're where we're at with this is they would use this material on the front and the left side. Okay. The right side and the rear could be metal siding and no no glazing. 
Okay. That's what we're requesting. Yes, sir. That's where we are. I that's, just want to make sure. I think that, that's, that's a question of whether the Planning Commission wants to recommend that to Council. That they waive, waive that. Okay. Certainly reasonable. They're, we're, we're not going to be able to see that side of the building or the back. The only thing that, that the back is exposed to are the truck drivers delivering to that, uh, that business behind us. Well, they may have an artistic sense. <laughs> they may. Uh, so, what is this? Where we're at here is traffic issue that we're we're recommending waivering waiving the requirement for a traffic study. Yes. Uh, loss of service. Uh, recommending approval of the loss of service because it's de minimis. And PennDOT's not requiring. They're going to do whatever PennDOT requires for their entrance. The landscaping is still up in the air as to whether or not Planning Commission wants to recommend a waiver of the lands. We can't re recommend a waiver. The landscaping you can. The landscaping we can? Okay. To some extent, yes. Essentially, we just want to drop the height. We just don't want it to be, you know, eight feet tall out front. Is it eight feet tall or four feet tall? It, it will, four? Well, at time of planning, it's four feet, but within a year, it's going to be, you're not going to be able to see the building. Well, boxwood you can trim. Well, boxwoods, that's what we would like to put in. Uh, the, the question is, is the weather... You want to waive the requirement of the, of the width of the planning strip, which are proposing four, and the ordinance requires eight, and the height of the evergreen, uh, which is required to be four. It's we would like it to be maximum of four feet. Instead of it being installed at four feet, we'd like it to be four feet for a max. That's yeah, not an issue. What's that? It's not an issue if it's four feet. It's only then the width of the planning strip that's the issue. <clears throat> You're going to have a hard time finding a four-foot box of it. Yes, you are. Yeah. How about this? If you put a mound of a foot or two high and planted the boxwood on top of the mound to, to uh, achieve a height of four foot, so we'd have to make the planning strip wider. Would that conflict with the uh, the grading, the stormwater? <laughs> I think it could be feasible. Um, obviously, we have we have drainage immediately along the frontage of our parking. It currently sheet flows, um, and is conveyed through swales al along the front. Leave some gaps in there. That's a possibility, or or the I guess the mound, so to speak, could. And should be placed closer to the right of way um, on the far side of of the parking area and, and the shrubbery could be planted there instead of immediately around the parking if that's preferred I'd, typically it looks a little bit better right right up against right the up parking against yeah it's easier to maintain that way you're not mowing around a right an island planting area. yeah well plus two it's lower in elevation as it goes to get right. it's not going to achieve the effect that the ordinance intends think okay so that's a possible solution but the pan the planning strip the mound would have to be two foot four foot Chris help me out here two yeah, foot I mean, I two foot <laughs> if it's two to one it's gonna be I see what he's talking about it being difficult they got these uh, these lower areas where it's sheep flowing off and draining the water around and it's already at a it, what looks to be possibly a two to one, three to one, three, three to one, more than likely. Well, couldn't they just shift that out a little bit? The, yeah, the, the swale. I, well, well, I'm just. Well, the issue we're is we're talking about the sheet a, flow, the water yeah, coming off. A blockage to your water. <clears throat> yeah. So if you'd have gaps in that, I, I'm not sure how how nice that would look with a couple of shrubs and then a gap in between. Man. I think it would be a maintenance maintenance nightmare. Issue. Yeah. I'm just trying to find a solution here. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, 
I guess I think it comes down to a, a preference of or a within reason of if if a a boxwood landscaping planning around the entirety of that perimeter is is acceptable. Say it's maintained at around three and a half, four feet high, or if you guys want to see something more robust. No, I think the boxwoods year round evergreen. It's uh, you know if you get it up high enough, it'll match the uh, the intent of the ordinance of being four feet. Plant it on top of a mound, and do this. The mound would the the mound and the landscape area would have to get wider than three or four feet, obviously, to put the mound in and have a have a slope and mulch. So it's going to be six feet or something like that wide. And I imagine you could stretch it to eight. Yes. Yes. I'd like to plant, plant uh, at the time of planting an 18 inch boxwood in the configuration that we're showing there. And be done with it. Consider that. The, the extra trees that are around there, is that required per the ordinance, Jim? So the, the extra trees that you have around front? Okay. Yeah, there, there was a, an ordinance requirement, from what I recall, for a, a minimum. <laughs> I think it's one for every 50 lineal feet. Yeah, th there's a minimum uh, tree planting requirement for for the site overall. So those are those are those are required. Then I mean specifically along the frontage. Where it <clears throat> does it designate that? I don't know off the top of my head. What I'm getting at is that could be something that we could use as a justification for allowing you to plant those smaller boxwoods, being that there's additional trees out front. I, I don't think they were specifically required for the front of the parking area. I think we put a couple in there and with an intent to try and help meet what the intent of the ordinance is, which is to have some, some landscaping along. Those the are deciduous trees? Correct. Okay. All right. And then finally, we have the... Uh, Recommendation on the facade. Okay. Is the Planning Commission prepared to make a recommendation to Council tonight? Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd. I mean, I'm okay with all these issues. I think we're kind of leaving the planning a little bit up in the air, unless we're just going to allow it at the, you know, maybe a 24 inch height, you know, for a boxwood. Okay. I mean, I would. Uh, so a two foot mound and a two f two foot boxwood. Then you're good without the mound. Can you just plant a, a 24 inch boxwood? It'll get up to four feet eventually. Boxwood? I don't uh, think we're going to buy a two foot boxwood. Okay. <laughs> no, I, that's going to be many years before it gets to be four foot. I have boxwoods in there. I have boxwood too. Yeah, they're, they're lucky to be 18 inches. So can we. Uh, Propose a different type. I mean, inkberry is another one. As long as we're, as long as they're 24 inches tall, whenever we plant them. In evergreen. Sure. Yeah, if, if you'd be willing to let us go back and, and take a look, something like an inkberry or, or another shrub. Evergreen. Is an inkberry a, a, an evergreen? I don't think. I don't think. Well, maybe a mixture of boxwood and inkberry or something. We can, we can come up with something. Is it evergreen? Okay. Someone care to make, put all of this into a motion? There's some other items that have to be included in that. <laughs> Such as? Uh, one is that they get the PennDOT HOP. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the typical outside approvals. Yes. How are you coming with your NPDS permit? Uh, so far, so good. We are down to some technical items. Uh, we have our completeness uh, letter in hand and, and we're addressing a couple of couple technical items with nothing of significance. Wasn't there something about the willow trees and the... Yeah, I guess a, a review cycle ago, uh, there was some concern about maintenance uh, relating to the proposed weeping willows and we had, we changed those out to another species to avoid that concern. Okay. Hogwarts. 
dogwood. Okay. All right, so the motion would have to include approval of, of PennDOT and the uh, uh, conservation district. There's some other requirements PennDOT's requesting. They have, have a turning lane, 125 foot turning lane. That's that's included in the PennDOT approval. Yeah, to clear uh, site distance issues on the south side of the property. Yeah. So that would be all part of the HOP permit. Yes. With PennDOT. You have to satisfy the HOP permit. <clears throat> HOP, County Conservation District, anything else? NPDS. NPDS approval. Utility letters. Utility letters. Execution of developer's agreement. Plan. Okay. And? And parking. That they either submit a parking study justifying the 35 cars or designating the four parking spaces in question as a as employee parking, that the facade be as presented with some samples of material. And I don't know, I don't know how to describe this. We'll call this rendered per perspective, as it says over here. Which includes metal on the south side of the building. Yes, and we are, we are recommending waiver of the um, material type and glazing on the right and rear of the building. And the landscaping must have a wider landscaping strip of eight foot doesn't all have to be planted. It's just a landscaping strip. And that the height, height at, at planting be four foot, including a mound. That's not the way I understood that discussion to go. Oh. I thought we were talking about uh, at planting, 24 inches tall. Yeah, on, no top of, on top of a mound. Without a mound. Oh, no, I don't think we discussed that. I don't. Yeah, well, I think we did, but you seem to be hung up on a mound. <laughs> well, I think, it's, I think it's a requirement of the four foot. I'm trying to meet the intent of the ordinance. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't see where it's a big deal. So unless you, I guess it sounds like you have to find a shrub that's four foot at planting. Then we wouldn't need a waiver or variance at all. Then you wouldn't. four foot. Then you want. It has to be continuous and evergreen. Continuous ever evergreen type. So you're saying that we can't do this with a 24 inch evergreen and no mount? Doesn't sound like it. No. Okay. So basically you're just saying meet the ordinance. Well, or I'm trying to, trying to, you know, I really don't see where putting a mount across there is going to be an earth-shaking deal, but, you know, meet the ordinance then. <laughs> you mentioned a maintenance issue, so you think the mound is a big maintenance issue? I do. Okay. Unfortunately, I mean, I just think it's going to be, with the way <clears throat> that sheet flow is coming off of there, that water is going to get trapped in there and potentially lay against the parking lot and create a problem. Mulch will be floating around in the parking lot, and yeah. who knows what's going to happen. So you're, you're better off without a mound. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So it's a four foot continuous evergreen planting. Yep. That's our recommendation. Native planting. Yes. Someone wanted to uh, make that a motion? It's, if it's in the form of a motion, so moved. <laughs> I'll second. Any questions on the motion? All so, I do. So just so I understand, we're not recommending 
uh, a waiver to the landscaping requirement. The only waiver we're recommending the council is for the glazing requirement on the right side of the building. Glazing and, and material. Okay. Glazing and material on okay. right and rear. And possibly uh, parking. And the and employee parking. parking. Okay. There's a motion, a second. No more questions. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you for working with us. You're going to, and the next time you go to, you're going to, you're going to say this is what you want, right? <laughs> uh, excuse me, sir. You got. You have to understand. This is only a recommendation. I understand. All right. I so did, I just didn't want any confusion. I've done this before, where I've had multiple um, presentations, and then it gets confused whenever we come to the final. I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. Well, just and that's the one just be prepared to bring more of these to the council meeting, as well as a sample. But uh, but in okay. addition, the council would probably want to see that metal I'll bring these siding. Okay, new business. Acceptance, me, consider minute. acceptance of CU-222, a conditional ap application by Gateway Services for a pet crematory. This is on Technology Lane in a B zoning 17. district. Yeah, Michael. Let me to wait till Jim's done or start? Right. Now go ahead. All right, my name's Jim Rumbaugh. Um, oh, I'm representing uh, Tetonio Investments. Partnership and uh, the Samson Morris Group. We're here. I have with me uh, Wesley Long from the uh, law firm of Long and Long, and Brian Sinan, who's the uh, senior vice president of the Samson Morris Group. As you can read, the first two items under new business. And we're here to ask uh, for you to accept the conditional use application by Gateway Services and ourselves, and also. Um, the advertising of a public hearing for conditional use. That's it. Basically, right now, I'm going to turn it over to Wes Long for a brief presentation and then uh, request for the uh, permission to be able to set up a public hearing. Okay, go ahead. Mr. Chairman and members of the commission, as indicated by Mr. Rumbaugh, my name is Wes Long. I am an attorney in Greensburg with the firm of Long and & Long, and I represent the applicant in this matter, uh, Teutonian Investments, which is a limited partnership. The general partner of Teutonian Investments is the Sampson, Moore Sampson Group. And I have tonight with me um, Mr. Sinan, who is an officer of that corporation, as well as Mr. Ben Sampson himself is here in the audience tonight, who is an owner and officer of that corporation as well. Uh, the purpose of the conditional use application is to permit uh, Teutonia Investment uh, to lease a warehouse building that they own in the Murraysville Industrial Park um, uh, up on Technology Drive, which if the commission is familiar with the location, is the industrial park that is behind the Spaghetti House uh, on Route 22, uh, which had recently burned. Uh, the tax map number for the parcel is 49-21-00-0-055, and it contains approximately 1.5 acres of size. Uh, situate on the lot is a 10,000 square foot uh, warehouse type facility. Uh, part of the 10,000 square feet is about 1,800 square feet that is available uh, for use as an office space. Uh, a little history on this matter. Um, proposed tenant for this site is a company known as Brandywine Green LLC. It's a wholly owned subsidiary, a, a subsidiary of a company called Gateway Services. Uh, Brandywine Green LLC <coughs> operates pet crematoriums uh, in 40 states and Canada uh, with approximately 200 locations. Um, the matter went before the Zoning Hearing Board 
uh, who after a hearing had, on a request for a variance determined that it was really the matter for a conditional use request and remanded it back uh, for this um, body to consider the application for the conditional use, to hold a public hearing on that request, and then make a recommendation to council for a second uh, public hearing on that request and for the ultimate decision for council. You may wonder what a pet crematorium is. Um, it just sounds like what it's, it is what it is, sounds like it is. Uh, it is a facility that prepares and disposes of pets, offers memorial services, memorial items, um, and grieving services, and is of great assistance to the local veterinarians. Um, the Murraysville Code uh, does not anywhere within the municipality provide for any sort of a crematorium, uh, whether it be for human or pets. Um, but so I think the natural process here is this property is zoned business and that the conditional use request should be compared to similar uses that are permitted uses or specified conditional uses uh, within the B zone. Um, the closest use in a B zone that is permitted uh, under the Murraysville Code is for a mortuary and funeral home, but by definition in the Murraysville Code specifically says not for crematorium purposes. Um, so there is no place in Murraysville where a crematorium of any sort is permitted. Uh, we are not, as a matter for the record, abandoning the possibility of a curative amendment, uh, but rather at this point <coughs> are going through the conditional use application. Um, the, uh, request, um, would be to consider the application. I would like the application to be amended to include as a co-applicant Brandywine Green LLC as they will be the sole tenant of the property that is owned by the applicant as listed, uh, Teutonian Investments. Um, and uh, as I indicated, they will be the sole tenant, will operate the crematorium. And I think just for the record, and future hearings and presentations, they should be listed as a co-applicant. Uh, the necessary fees as required by section 220-29 of the Murraysville Code have been deposited with the municipality as of this evening. And um, on behalf of the applicant, uh, I would merely request uh, that this matter be scheduled for a public hearing which I think is required under 220-29 subsection D of the code. And uh, we will have uh, the representatives uh, for Brandywine LLC, as well as the owner of the property present at that public hearing, and we'll present much more information in great detail uh, as to how uh, one goes about operating a pet crematorium. Any questions? Just out of curiosity, how big a pet are you planning to dispose of? It would be the typical, uh, as I understand, Mr. Patrick, the typical household pets. Okay, so we're not talking elephants or, or horses? I haven't Good. seen one in Murraysville of recent date, but uh, that's my understanding. Well, there have been horses in Murraysville. <laughs> okay, so... Let me ask Mr. Morrison some a question here. We're, we're, we don't have a problem with scheduling the public hearing, but what, did we actually have an application that meets the, is there a site plan? Is there anything? The conditional use application was included in the Dropbox. I, I saw the application, but is there, 
with a conditional use application, are there not usually some sort of plans or whatever? It would be this document of an existing building. There's not a need for a site plan. Yes, Mr. Maito, it would be contained entirely within the current facility. And I did uh, bring two, a Google Earth and a GIS map of the facility with me here this evening. If anybody would care to see it, I could make it part of the record. I, I think we just need to know which building this is. So where's 22 here, Wes? I think it's up this way. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, this is... What 22 is, is to Mel the... Is, is this Mellon Road? Here, or to the north road. No, where? No, oh, that's Watson's or yep. Whitmore, whatever it is now. It's working. Oh, it's yeah. yeah. You need the microphone? Yes. <laughs> well, they're conferring. <laughs> I'll bring it here up on Google Earth in a second. Okay. I, I, fine. Use the microphone. I don't get hollered at. The drawing I brought is to, just shows the building itself. Um, there are no resident, residential properties at all in this neighborhood. This is purely the industrial or business area. One that looks like what, this one here? Yeah, the, black, the black roof. The black, black roof. roof. Yes. Okay. So 20, 20, 22 is, there. is out here. Yeah. Uh, on the right. So this is way back in there. Almost at the end of Technology yeah. Drive, Mr. Michael. It's actually the last building. It's, it's all the way at the very, very it's top. It's way in the back. I, I have it part of the presentation. We have all the location with five different photographs of Google Earth and everything else. I didn't Almost know that you were going to yeah. need well, that I, I, No, I, I don't know that we need it tonight. It's the very but, top building. Yeah. It's the yeah. last building in that industrial park, surrounded, by no, surrounded pretty much by nothing but, but trees. Trees and whatnot. Yeah. So this is the... Uh, is Flagger Force the, still there? Or what? Westco. This Say again? The other yeah, distributors. Westco. That's Westco. That's that uh, Cohen uh, yeah, gas, gas station. station. Shorky's over there. Okay, right. That's the address. What are we, what's this building? Or is OPA? I don't know. Okay. Uh, okay. Just a question. Uh, how much of this building are they going to be occupying? The entire facility, Mr. Michael. Entire facility. And there's, it appears that there's loading docks and parking and everything like that. So not being familiar with, do they actually, I, I, saw, I thought I saw something here where they have Viewings? Yes, but that would be, you know, obviously inside. Everything will be contained within the facility. Technology drive. Okay. So I can't really imagine this turning out to be like Hart's funeral home when the when a citizen dies. That I, know, I would not think so. You would need a whole bunch of parking. This is non-sectarian, I take it. I, I don't know. I don't want to get that way. Get into that, Ed. <laughs> okay. All right, so... I have a motion to accept the app, the conditional use application. So as, as amended. Yes, as amended. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 And can I have a motion to advert, uh, to authorize the staff to I provide a public hearing? Make a motion we uh, schedule uh, authorize staff to uh, set up a Public hearing. September 13th. September 13th. Okay. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Very good. Thank you.
you have any luck there, Mr. Morrison, on bringing it up on Google Earth? Not a lot. It didn't show up. 103 Technology Drive, Murraysville. If you, why don't you? May I make a suggestion? Sure. If you look, if you look in, um, do Westmoreland County GIS and type in the tax map number. I have Technology Lane. 103 Technology Lane. It comes up on Google Earth. It's 103 Technology Lane. That's that's correct. But uh, give me bad advice here, huh? Was it me? Who signed the application. That's it's going to be really exciting when you see it. <laughs> it might be cheaper. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to scroll through to find it. And it's... Isn't this what happened to Jimmy Hoffa? Ask. Thank you, Wish we were off the air. <laughs> okay. All right. There we go. Where is it? Okay. Yeah, see, 22 is, is to the north. 22 down right. here. Okay, now we know where it is. Yeah. William Penn Care Center's way to down. the, way up there. like at 1 o'clock there. That's Ader Road to the, to the south. I Not guess I would be... Apex, per pardon me? Sell as well. Yeah. I guess I would be prepared to talk about odor controls and that sort of thing. This is the information that I have, and but we will have representatives from Brandywine at the public hearing. Okay. In the uh, zoning hearing board decision, there were specific items uh, identified to be uh, responded to by the applicant in the zoning hearing board decision. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, for us to, yes. to address. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank All right. You. Thank you. Uh, the next item is uh, SP 522 and CU 522. This is the Lions Run AMD remediation project. It's a major land development and conditional use. Uh, this is out on Boxcar, and it's in an RR Rural Residential Zoning District. <coughs> Thank you. Mr. Rumbaugh, are you representing this applicant as well? No, I am not. Well, I guess we're lucky. <laughs> Good evening. Good Could evening. You give us your name and that. Uh, my name is Tim Denicola. I work with civil and environmental consultants. This is my colleague, Steve Taylor, who also works with CEC. Uh, I'm a geologist and handle a lot of the project development, and he's very much more familiar with the regulatory processes here in the municipality. Okay. I'm representing Lions Run Watershed Association for the Lions Run Passive AMD Remediation Project along Boxcar Town Road. I believe we've submitted a conditional use and land development application. And I'm basically here to provide clarification on any items. Do you have a site plan or something that you want to read? I'm getting there. The, oh, yeah. Waiting for Mr. Morrison to... Uh, the first exhibit that will uh, that will show is a uh, zoomed out uh, perspective to show the property in relation to other uh, relevant features of the municipality. Uh, then we can get into a uh, permit uh, engineering uh, design set. Uh. You have the plan in front of you. Could you zoom that from the table, please? Hello? There we go. Uh, I'm not sure if that could be zoomed. So. What, what we were trying to show here is just the site location and proximity to the other features of the municipality. And then I, I do have some documentation here that's site specific. Okay. I don't see anything in the Dropbox, Mr. Morrison, or yeah, it's, plans. It's embedded in the conditional use application. The 900. 
153 pages. <laughs> Which I thoroughly reviewed last night. <laughs> Oh, yes. Okay. It's in the conditional use application. All right. Go ahead, sir. Uh, well, just to start off, uh, uh, the site location is south of William Penn Highway 22. The waste management landfill is a, a, what I'd consider to be a substantial landmark to uh, kind of display to uh, uh, the members here, the location. And then uh, uh, Blackthorn Estates, which you may or may not be familiar with, is the neighboring parcel to kind of give you a geographic location for this project. Um, as long as you're comfortable with the site location, I'll, I'll bring in some more site-specific information, which will require a greater level of zoom. It's a smaller plan set. Go ahead. There, I have that up. Okay. Can you put my screen up, please? Okay, so there's various exhibits within our plan set. Uh, this one, I believe, is our uh, post-construction uh, stormwater management plan, but that will be sufficient for our talking points. Uh, this is a passive mine water remediation project. So there are three acid mine water discharges in proximity to this parcel. Um, they're generally referred to as L4, L5, and L upwelling. They're low pH, high acidity, high iron, high aluminum mine water discharges from abandoned mining uh, activities that took place prior to 1977, prior to the Surface Mining Control and Reclamation Act. There's no liable owner. They freely discharge into a tributary to Lyons Run, and they impair ecological function and aesthetic condition of the tributary and of the Lyons Run main stem for approximately four to six miles. Uh, Lions Run Watershed Association has proposed to treat these mine water discharges through uh, passive, uh, passive practices, no automated systems, no power into the site, a gravity-driven acid neutralization system, which basically consists of flushing limestone beds and settling ponds. So flushing limestone beds, they neutralize the acid. Once the acid's neutralized, the metals precipitate. They precipitate in the limestone. So they're periodically flushed to a settling pond where those solids are allowed to accumulate often for years to decades between maintenance activities. Um, the final effluent um, in the exhibit on the screen, uh, the mine water is basically moving from right to left uh, with the flushing limestone beds on the right, a settling pond in the center, another flushing limestone bed, and then a final settling pond. Following that final settling pond are one existing and two constructed uh, riparian wetlands for final polishing of the mine water and to bring some additional ecological function to the property, at which point the treated water conveys back into the unnamed tributary, ultimately conveying into the Lions Run main stem. Okay. And the major excavation is really to construct the ponds and... That's my understanding, but if I'm missing it, then... Correct. Okay. How many yards? Approximately 7,500. Uh, we've balanced cut fill on the site. Gentlemen, and again, I guess what we're asking for here is to accept this and to have a public hearing. Any questions at this point, gentlemen? I don't think I have any. No. Okay, can we have a motion to accept uh, the application for Lions Run AMD? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 I abstain. As I'm a board member of the Lions Run Watershed Association. Uh, the next is the uh, to authorize a public hearing. I have a motion to direct the staff to have a schedule a public hearing. September 13th. September I'll make 13th. a motion to authorize the scheduling of the public hearing. Second. Can all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. We'll see you guys at the public hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other, anything else for the good of the cause, uh, Mr. Morrison? No, I tried to balance out uh, what's becoming a busy schedule here, but uh, with uh, the postponement and tabling of 
certain projects. We just got backed up again. The uh, 823 meeting, uh, dedicated nurses will be here for their phase two development on Wilson and Manor Road. Is that the corporate park? Hustings Corporate uh, Park. Okay. Uh, for Sean, for uh, I accept uh, a rezoning request and schedule a public hearing. Tommy's will be back. Hermes will be back, and Redstone for rezoning. Who for rezoning? Redstone. Yeah. Mm. Things are going to get a little busy. I guess we're going to earn our pay, huh? Yeah. All right, Carl. Anything on you to uh, the uh, home of charter, which says you serve at the pleasure of council with no remuneration. <laughs> That's what it says in the Home Rule Charter? Yeah, no remuneration. Who, the, who came up with this Home Rule Charter? <laughs> it's the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. And it just makes us feel so good. Yes. <laughs> You're serving I'm glad your community. to uh, talk with the school board to see with their, you know, what they pay their staff. I see what they pay their staff. I don't know. <laughs> staff at the council. To yeah. Board. Okay, is there anything else for the good of the cause this evening? I move we adjourn. Is there a second. second? All those in favor say aye. 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 aye.